fun to do bad things and drive into a car. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on the GS. And uh, I wasn't gonna do this, but we are going to install coilovers because it sounds so bad. Like, watch, shake the car. You can hear the car squeak from a mile away. Look at that, listen to that. And you can hear that all the way down the street as you drive. So I got these coilovers. Yes, there are some cheap eBay coilovers. They're called like Rev9 or something. But hear me out, I'll explain it a bit. Uh, these are super cheap and the only reason is because the car squeaks like crazy and I want to get rid of the squeaking noise so I can enjoy the car. But I'm actually going to swap the IS300 coilovers with this down the line so I can run softer springs on that car. Um, th and those are like 18-16k springs which will be perfect for this. But the only difference between this car and the IS is the top hatch so I'll just reuse these top hats for now. But uh, today, let's get these coilovers on so I can stop sounding like a damn like bed when i drive all right so this car and this car pretty much identical first things first take off the top hat loosen it up and then there's a couple ways of doing this we can either lo loosen it from here it'll be a lot easier or um you can try loosening the control arm from right there or also from right here since i have the right tools this time i can just loosen it from here and it'll drop the whole spindle that would be probably the easiest, but yeah. So we're gonna take everything apart. Giant bolt right here. We're gonna loosen the sway bars and then we should be able to drop everything. So we took off the bottom bolt right there, the brake line right there, and then move the sway bar out the way. Now we're gonna take off this top bolt and everything should just fall out. All right, we got everything loose. You can see everything's falling out, but we don't have enough room to take out the strut. So we're gonna pop this ball joint out. There's a couple ways of doing this. You can hammer it, but I already have this tool. I'm gonna use this. Hopefully it doesn't bend anything. I'm probably gonna use a wrench. So after we remove this, we have plenty of room to remove this right here. Right, so you can pick this up, move this to the side. Be careful because the brake line is right here. And you can just pull this out and do this by myself. It's challenging, but move it out of the way. There we go. Day. I can let drop. Ah. Oh, I don't know why that made it look so difficult, but it's not. You can put this back in so it doesn't put tension on your brake line. That. Right in the bolt. Because then the coilover is a lot shorter. So let's get that coilover in. Can you grab me a coilover? All right, so now you can shove the new coilover in. I'm trying to do this by one-handed. Let's see if I can do it. Shove it in here, actually. So I got it in there. Now I have someone at the top, put it in the bolts. I'm just holding it in place. So after you've got the top mounted, now you gotta mount the bottom. Easiest way is to jack it up from the bottom. All right, I got that bolt in. Now you can tighten everything up. All right, I got everything in. Both sides are in, everything is tight. Now we're gonna put the wheels back on, drop the front, and start on the rear. All right, so now we're gonna start on the rears. First thing first, take off the wheel. Get access to the trunk. Cause then you're gonna remove the top hats from over there. I think that's where the squeak is coming from. But it's right there and right there. I think the rears are easier than the front, so we should get through this quick. A little bit different. So you have one bolt here, and then you're gonna wanna take out the sway bar. Take out the bolt for the sway bar on both sides so you can drop the arm down more and then you should be able to pull out the strut. So you wanna remove this, this is the way to adjust camber on the car. You have to take it out. Um, if you wanna mark it, you can mark it and put it back to where it was. But you're gonna need alignment anyway, so. But once you take it out, you have plenty of room to move this and take the coilover out. All right, so now you can put your new coilovers in. You can put them from top. You don't need to mount at the bottom yet. Um, you're gonna put this bolt in first because it's the hardest to align. All right, got everything in. I lined it up back to Original spot, that bolt's in, everything's tight. 
Just gotta time the coil over down and do the other side. So it's a new day and honestly, it got kind of dark and I was tired yesterday, but today what we're gonna do is just make sure everything's level and we have an appointment for an alignment today at 12. And I'm gonna show you guys the final results because I don't wanna show you. With this wonky alignment, the toe is crazy off, hella camera in the rear. And the front alignment is actually, honestly, I kind of leveled it pretty good, but I just want it to be a little bit more even because that side is kind of lower than the, that side. So we're gonna raise this by like a couple spins and should be set. So it is 32 away adjustable. I mean, I don't really know how much adjustable adjustability it has. So um, is that full soft? 32, let's go to 16 for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's a heavy boy. And honestly, these coilovers, spring rates are like 10 and 8K. My car has 18 and 16K and it feels like pretty good. So, and I, I used to have 14 and 10. I thought that was way too soft for that car. And this car weighs more. So this is why I want to swap that coil over into here probably in the next year or so so this car is just the daily for now once i swap into here i'm gonna run a because um once i have more power in that car i do want softer suspension for the grip and this car is just gonna be the daily all right so i just got the alignment and things to note when you do lower your lexus is 300 or gs is that the rear camber is adjusted by something called an eccentric nut and so you don't have a lot of adjustability and uh, I wanted to go more positive in the rear just because, you know, zero camera in the rear is better for drifting. But if I go more zero, then that would mean, oh, there's a cop. That would mean that uh, it would be towed out too much and I wouldn't have enough adjustability to bring it back in because of the centric bolt. So you would need a uh, adjustable tow arm, just like I have on my IS300, I have an excessive one. But other than that, the car just drives it pretty good. Quick review of the coilover before I show you guys the stance, how it looks. It's not that low, but it's drivable. These coilovers are really soft. They feel almost OEM in terms of like ride quality. Um, they are 10K front, 8K rear, which is pretty damn soft for a heavy ass car, but it feels good. This is my daily for now. And uh, for the price, it's not bad. Would I recommend it? 50-50, right? If you have the money, buy something expensive. If you're not gonna go anything too crazy on the car, if it's just a daily, and you don't plan to do any like crazy fitment things on there, then I suggest you you can buy it. It, it drives great on the road, and it's only been a day. And I'm on the freeway right now, and it's not like bouncy, it's comfortable. And I don't plan to have like a crazy fitment on it yet. So for a price, for the road, I think it's great. If you have the money, I would, I would suggest the next budget thing to get CX Racing, the 14K, 10K rear, 14K front, 10K rear, just because those are a lot stiffer and will be better for the track. But um, this is good for now. So let me show you guys how it looks. All right, so here is the final fitment. Boom. It's uh, it's not that low. Honestly, this is a lot higher than my IS300, but it just looks kind of low but the adjust the coilers have so much adjustment. Like I had to raise this thing so much in the front and rear. Um, this co coilover can probably sit the car on the ground, but yeah, for my daily, it's not bad. I'll look at it right here. Well, water got to my uh, paper, but you can see my alignment. Front camera's 2.2, cash and now is around eight to nine, which I don't know how it got so damn high. Um, rear camber is at 2.8, 2.9, and it can actually go more positive, but the, the problem is the toe has no more adjustment. So if you go more positive on the camber, it's going to be towed out too much and it won't go into spec. So next thing I'm going to get is some rear toe arms, but for now, it's just a daily. So, all right. I hope you guys liked this video. Um, I hope the coilover stalls was as simple as I told you guys. It is pretty simple. I did it in about two hours. So the first hour in the front, first hour in the rear. And honestly, it was super easy um, just because I've done it so many times in my IS300. The only difference between that car and this car is just the size and weight. So I hope you guys are able to lower your car super quick and easy. Um, you have the right tools. It makes it a lot faster than having a ball joint separator. And then that's pretty much it, having the right sockets and then making sure you remove the rear camber bolt eccentric bolt in the rear so you have more room to take out the shock other than that super easy 
Hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys are excited for this GS build like I am. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.